from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Well, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We are so glad that you joined us today right here on TBN, the number one Christian network in the world. And what a day this is going to be. My dear friend, Pastor Samuel Cornish is with me today. Pastors a great church in Abaco, an island of the Bahamas, an incredible church filled with God-fearing, God-loving people, reaching out, touching their community, but seeing the manifestation of God's power. It's a church that sings signs, wonders, miracles, healings, and salvation. And God has sent this man here today on a specific assignment. He's brought you to this program, to this network for a specific reason. God wants to say something to you today. He has something that he wants to speak into your heart and speak into your life that I believe is going to cause change and transformation to come from the inside out to every area and every part of your life. So don't you dare go anywhere. Stay right where you are because God is getting ready to release a word to you. I do want to take a moment just to say a big thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, Miss Jan Crouch for giving us the opportunity not just to come together today, but for the opportunity to preach Jesus Christ to you, to bring the message of Jesus Christ into your life and into your home. That's what TBN is doing literally around the world. And as always, I encourage you to pray for Matt and Lori, pray for Miss Jan, that God would just continue to strengthen them and use them as they continue to lead and build this great network. Now, I want you to take a moment with me right now to position yourself Let's align our hearts with the plan and the purposes of God for this day. As we go to the Lord in prayer, Father, we ask you to speak to our hearts today, to minister to us in a profound, life-changing way. God, our hearts are yours, our lives are yours, our eyes, our ears. It all belongs to you. So help us see what you want us to see and help us hear what you want us to hear. Let change and transformation come as a result of this time we spend together today in your presence. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want you to get ready to praise the Lord. I want you to get ready to worship Him as Zachary Smith comes and sings, Lost in the Realms of Glory. Jesus, 
You're all I want. You're all I want, Jesus. I worship you. All I want is you. Lord, let me live. Lord, let me live. Forever lost in the realms of glory. Lord, let me live. Forever to live. Wrapped up in you. Lord, let me live. Lord, let me Forever lost in the realms of your glory, Lord, let me live forever to live. Yes, wrapped up in you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, let me live saturated. Drunk on your new wine, Lord, intoxicated with a pure heart set apart, consecrated. Drunk on your new wine, Lord, intoxicated. You're all I want, Jesus, my first love. You're all I want, you're all I want, Jesus. I worship you, all I want is yeah. you. Lord, let me live, Lord, let me live forever, Lord. secret place, Lord, lost in the realm of your glory. Lord, let me live forever to live. Thank you, Lord, wrapped up in you. In your presence, Lord, it's where Abraham was lost. As he got lost in your presence, they tell me, Enoch, walked away with you in your presence, Lord. Moses was on the mountain lost. Joshua got lost. Elijah was caught up with you, caught up with you. I choose to live. Oh, Lord, forever to live. Lost in the realm of your glory. By the river lost. Peter was in your presence lost. John was wrapped up in you, wrapped up in you. Lord, let me live, Lord. I choose to live forever lost in the realm of your glory. Lost in your reveal, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take me away. Take me away with you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says if you draw near to me, if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. No matter what you're going through, every yoke will be broken, every burden will move because of his anointing. Worship, worship, worship. We worship you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. You're all we want, you're all we need, Lord. More than enough, he's more than enough. His presence will go before you. The Bible says the heels, they melt like wax in the presence.
presence of the Lord, and no foe can stand before him. No sickness can stand before him. Nothing can resist his spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. Touching me. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let me live. Lord, let me live. Forever, Lord, in the wrath of your glory. Lord, let me live forever to live. Wrapped up in Well, the presence of the Lord is in this place. You can sense it. You can feel it. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, the Bible tells us there's liberty and there's freedom. And I believe that freedom is about to come to you. In the area of your thinking, the area of the way you speak, your belief system, your faith, freedom is getting ready to come to your life. And freedom comes not just in the presence of the Lord, but when the Word of God is spoken and declared. And we have a man of God here today who I'm so honored and privileged to be able to call him my friend, but an anointed preacher, an anointed person walking under an incredible mantle right now who's on an assignment today to release a word to you. So would you open your heart and welcome with me my dear friend, Pastor Samuel Bless Cornish. You, Bless you, sir. Good to see you today. Good to see you too, sir. And good to have you here with us. Always a pleasure. You came in yesterday. Yes, when sir. you landed, I said, welcome to sunny Florida, <laughs> forgetting you came from the Bahamas. Yes, sir. God's country. God's country. God's country. God's country, yeah. I told you, you're the only guest I brought in recently that I can't brag about living in Florida. <laughs> but God's doing a tremendous work yes, there at Change is. Ministries International. Yes, I've preached for you. I've been there. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, tell us a little bit about the church, about the ministry, and some of the things you're seeing God doing there in Abaco. Right. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you once again to Miss um, Jan Crouch um, for allowing us to be here, Matt and Laurie, um, allowing us to be here, and to you also thank you, for opening sir. this wonderful door. Um, for us, but God is doing a great work in the Bahamas, man. Um, it's it's the country where God lives. That's he, what they say. He, he resides there. He don't vacation there. He don't visit there. He lives. He lives. Yeah, he, he lives in the Bahamas. I I just believe that with all my heart. Yeah. And uh, but Change Ministry is a great church. Uh, we've been now 14 years. Wow. Um, the Lord has has um, blessed us. Um, as you know, my I've been to um, Pastor Rod Parsley School in Columbus, mm -hmm. Ohio, for three and a half years. Um, schools there, came back home um, in, two, in the year 2000, started a church in 2002, mm -hmm. and um, God has really, really been good to us. Um, blessed us with a multi-million dollar building. It's a beautiful 14 facility. years, and you've been there. Yeah. Preach all the paint off the wall. We had to repaint <laughs> it um, and, and put it back together. This man is a preacher. Uh, and, thank you, um, sir. Thank but, you. but God has really, really been good to us. We started in a 66-seat building, um, Pastor. And um, some pastor who's watching today needs to know that though your beginning be small, mm -hmm. your latter end shall greatly increase. Amen to that. Um, and better is the end of a thing. Mm -hmm. than the beginning, beginning of a thing. You know, people judge us by our beginning, <laughs> but they don't understand that you can't judge something if God is in it. Right. Um, you have no right to judge it, mm -hmm. you see? If God is in it, then the ending is up to him and not up to us. Amen. And so our beginning was small. We started a little 66, build, 66 seat building upstairs. <laughs> um, my professor who, who um, taught me in school told me, don't start a church upstairs Stairs, right. because <laughs> statistics prove right. that they do not prosper. Mm -hmm. I said, well, God told me to start in this little 66 seat building. <laughs> and um, contrary to what you believe, I respect you. Right. But this is the door that God opened for yes, us. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Um, we started there, Pastor, and that thing grew. In one year, we had to have children's church outside. Um, this, this, out, I'm telling you, in the parking lot. <laughs> the owner of the building came to us and said, I do not like how you're having um, children's church in the parking lot. Yeah. I have a building that I will give you to have give. children to give to us, wow. to have children's wow. church in. He gave us the building, and we did children's church in that for the next year. We moved to another building, a 170-seat building. We moved into that building a year later. I thought it was big then. <laughs> and um, that thing grew so fast, um, Pastor. And um, we started to have children's church outside again. 
The owner of the building came to us. <laughs> Same exact story. Said, I don't like how you guys are having children's church on the outside. I have a building. Yeah. He says, I'll give you the building to have children's church in. He gave us the building. We didn't have to pay one dime for it. Wow. And that thing grew so wow. fast. And in three years, I told our church, I said, we're not moving again. We're going <laughs> to build our own building. And we built our church in three years, Pastor. Wow. Three years, wow. a multi-million dollar building. And God has tremendously blessed us in 14 years. And for that, I'm glad. He has blessed you. Yes, and sir. I know that there are people today that are watching who are hurting. Yes, sir. They're going through some stuff. Yes, sir. And they, they, they tune into TBN because they know they're going to hear a word. Right. They're going to hear one today. There are people, as I said, dealing with sickness and infirmity and all of kinds course. of things. Of course. Encourage us for a of few course. minutes in the Lord, would you? Um, First Samuel chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30. You know the story quite well. It talks David about, about David mm -hmm. and um, how, how his city, the city was burnt. They went out and they came back and um, the city was burnt. Mm -hmm. imagine, imagine that, Pastor. <laughs> Um, you go out to war, you and your men, and you come back, and everything that you work for in one minute gone. is gone. Wow. Everything wow. that you labored for, everything you worked for, everything you sweat for, in, in a minute, it's gone. Mm -hmm. How many people um, in the last seven years in this recession wow. that everything they worked for, Pastor, is gone? Wow. I'm talking about houses they built cars they've been paying on, everything gone. Mm. And in a split second, you need to look at it, and there's nothing there. Wow. The first thing the Bible says that happened that distressed David was not the fact that his family was gone. It was not the fact that his stuff was gone. Mm -hmm. The first thing that discouraged David was that the people who he fought with turned on him. Wow. The Bible wow. said he was distressed because the people right. thought of stoning him. You're right. Not because his wives were gone. Hmm. Not because his stuff were gone. Mm -hmm. See, because if stuff go, you can get it back. Right. As long as you got Jesus. You can get it back. You can get back what you lost. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. But the thing about it is, is that when people who fight along with you, mm -hmm. when people who've been there with you for years, and you feel like they've got your back, mm -hmm. and you've got theirs, and then you turn around, and they're the ones that walk out on you. Right. There's nothing right. in the world that hurts, hurts like that. Worse. Yeah, you're you so see, right. and, and you have marriages, people who have been in marriages for years, put time into it. Mm -hmm. And after years of putting time into it, somebody walks out of the marriage mm. and leave. Wow. And see, the Bible says this, Pastor, in Joel chapter 2, he says, I will restore unto you the years mm -hmm. that the locusts have eaten. Mm -hmm. Not the stuff. The years. The years. Because there's some of us who didn't lost stuff. Right. There's a whole lot of us that lost years. In relationships, losing years. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in marriages, we've lost years. Um, we, we're involved in stuff where it didn't work out, and you lost years. But God says, I'm not just going to give you stuff back. Mm. I'm going to give you your years back. The years of hurt, the years of pain, the years of destruction, the years of being frustrated and laying down at night with tears rolling down your face and you can't tell nobody what you're going through but God. Yeah, and God yeah, says, yeah. not about the stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you your years, years back. back. See, and when God gives you your years back, Pastor, he gives you your sanity back. <laughs> he gives you your mind back. Because some of the stuff that some of us went through in this recession that we just coming out of, Pastor, it would have sent some of us crazy. Sure. But see, God kept our minds together. He kept our lives together. And for that, we got to give him praise. Hey, hey. So God says, and, and I'm trying to behave, you know me. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. really trying to behave. <laughs> but, but, but the Bible says the first thing that David did was encourage himself in the Lord. Talk about and it. And see, there are some times that you have to look in the mirror and encourage yourself. You, you can't wait for a prayer warrior to do it. Yeah. You, you can't wait till you get a Hammond B3 organ and you get the right singer and the right, right praise and worship leader to get to church because sometimes you ain't going to make it to church. Right. Sometimes you got to have church in your own bathroom. Come you got to have sir. church in your own living room. You got to lift up your hand and say, I will bless the Lord yeah. at all times. And when he says all times, he's talking about all seasons. Right. Good times, bad, bad times. times. Hard times on the mountain and in the valley because life is a life is a process of hills and valleys. Sure. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes you have joy, sometimes you have sorrow. But David learned something in the process. Mm -hmm. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually to be in my mouth. So David, in the midst of losing everything, 
in the midst of losing his wife, in the midst of losing his stuff, in the midst of everybody turning on him, the first thing he did was encourage himself. And I'm talking to somebody who's sitting in the front of this television today. The first thing you got to do and learn how to do is learn how to encourage yourself. Don't wait till you get to church. Don't wait for a preacher to do it. Don't wait for a praise and worship leader to do it. You need to learn how to bless the Lord uh -huh. at all times and his praise. Because there's something about praise, man. Talk about it. There's something about when we begin to worship God. There's something about when we begin to glorify him. The word of God says that when the children of Israel march around that wall. Mm -hmm. they, they say, the God says to them, he says, be quiet, don't say nothing for seven days, just don't, right. just don't say anything. Right. But he says, when I tell you to shout, ah. he says, just lift up your voice. You don't, you, don't, you don't need a sword. You don't need a weapon. Ah, All nothing. you need is a shout. shout. And the it. minute they open up their mouth, everything that was blocking them out of their possession came down. And somebody that's watching me today, God says, if you would just open up your mouth in the middle of your distress, in the middle of your hurt, in the middle of your divorce, in the middle of you losing everything, he says, everything that you lost, I'll break the walls down and let you have access to it if See, you just praise if him. you just praise ah. him he encouraged himself mm -hmm. and then the second thing that he did pastor you could jump in anytime oh i'm listening the, the second sir. thing that he did the bible says he went to the lord and he put on an effort mm -hmm. and he prayed yeah yeah he sought the face of god mm -hmm. the first thing he did was encourage himself mm -hmm. the second thing he did was sought god mm -hmm. he said god should i pursue mm -hmm. should i go up should I overtake? Mm -hmm. See, because sometimes we do stuff without asking God if we should do Boy, it. that's so true. And we get so ourselves true. in so much. We're mad he doesn't back us up, but we never supposed to go in the no, first No, we never supposed to go in the first place. And then sometimes we do stuff um, when God, already, his anointing is already lifted off of it. Mm -hmm. You remember when the children of Israel were supposed to go into the promised land? Yeah. They didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and God got really upset with them, and then they turned around and said, God, we're going to go now. Right. God said, well, if you go, I ain't I'm going, going with, with you. <laughs> <laughs> you see? And, and so sometimes we want to go and we want to go, you right. see? And so that's important for us to see God and say, God, should I marry this person? Mm -hmm. God, should I do this business deal? Because he's concerned about the very minutest parts of our life that Absolutely. we don't think that he cares You're about. So right. See, he says, he said, if you ask me, he says, I'll give it to you that the father is glorified in the son that you bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. See, with God giving you what you ask for glorifies him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say that yeah, again. Please do. With God, when you ask him for something, with him giving it to you, glorifies him. Mm -hmm. See, he says, ask and you shall receive that the father is glorified Five. in the son that you bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. God wants to bless us. He does. He wants to have us to have the best life that we can have. Mm -hmm. He wants our children to be saved. He wants us to have the best marriage on this side of heaven yeah, so does. that people can look at your marriage and say, I want my marriage to be like that. He wants that type of a life for us. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, the Bible says David inquired of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He sought God. How do I be a better husband? Right. God, how do I be a better wife? God, how do I be a better father to my children? See, we have to ask him. And the Bible says, David inquired of the Lord. And then God says to him, he says, go ahead, pursue. <laughs> pursue him. Mm -hmm. He says, you're going to overtake. And you will without fail. And without fail. <laughs> overtake. Come on now. <laughs> you shall recover all. Mm -hmm. The third thing is, he did not move until God spoke. Say that now. Pastor, he did not move until God spoke. Wow. Wow. He encouraged himself. He asked of God. But he didn't move until God spoke. Mm -hmm. Not because God tells you, Pastor, church, mean that he wants you to go now. Right. Not because God <laughs> tells you to go, <laughs> come on now. Not because God tells you to go to Africa on mission means he means now. now. Right. He could mean later. Mm -hmm. See? And so he did not move until God told him to move. to move. Why is that important, Pastor? The reason that is important is because God is not a man. Mm -hmm. that he should lie, yeah, yeah. nor the son of man that he yes. shall repent. Mm -hmm. One of the most craziest and most powerful things that you can ever do is to get God to talk. Because huh. if God ever says something, it, gotta happen. it can't go back on his word, <laughs> you see? And so when you pray, once you hear him say something, mm -hmm. then you can rest on it right. that it's going to come to pass. I love that. But see, if you don't hear him say something, Mm -hmm. and you go move on it, mm -hmm. then you're out there by yourself. Mm -hmm. 
But if you can get him to talk, <laughs> if you can just get him to say something. Get him to say something. Oh, oh, my God. Just get him to say one word. And if you can get him to talk, you can stand on that word because you know that God cannot lie. He mm -hmm. says there's two immutable things about God. It is impossible mm -hmm. for God to, to lie. lie. He can't lie. Love it. He can't lie. And it. so he waited for God to say to him, it's time now for you to go. He says, without fail, you shall recover all. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about it is, Pastor, and I probably may be talking too much. You? Um, oh. The thing about it is, Pastor, is this. My question was, why did David have to ask God to go after what he lost? We got to talk about that. Be be because if, if he lost it and it belonged to it's you, his. it's his, why should I have to ask God to go after what I lost? And the reason is, is some things that you lose, he don't want you to have. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love There's it. There's some it. things that you want to recover that he God wants you. No, sir. There's some things God takes out of our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why David understood there's some of the stuff that I lost in this battle that they took from me, I don't need to go get back. So, good. so I have so to good. ask God, God, what is it that you want me to recover? Mm -hmm. And God says, You're going to recover everything. Everything. Not just some things. All you see? It. And somebody that's watching today need to know this, that you're about to recover all. Mm. Everything that you lost, you're about to recover all. There's some people that lost houses in the last seven years. There's some people that lost families in the last seven years. There's some people that lost children in the last seven years. Mm. They're going to recover all in because Jesus. this is the season for it. I have a family in my church, Pastor. They had a, a family member that was locked up for years. I'm talking about years, and I get to talking like this on the pulpit. That family came and sowed a seed and said, Lord, we believe in you that he's going to get released out of prison. And I'm talking about in three months, that man was released out of prison. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Because when it comes to season and the time, mm -hmm. there's nothing nobody can do about it. Our responsibility as pastors is to stir the water. And to let them know. The people's responsibility is to jump in. To jump in. I believe that this is a moment for somebody to jump in. Yeah. We're here to stir the water, to stir up that anointing, to stir up that power. And you're feeling that power is being released into your house right now. What you need to do is do something that will cause a release of the anointing to come into your house, and there will be a release yeah. that happens in your life. And I want to say to those of you that are watching, the water has been stirred. The atmosphere has been prepared. Now just jump in. Pastor Jonathan, what do you mean? Jump in and believe that all will be restored to you. Jump in to believe that without fail, you shall recover all. Please know, as you stand in faith for your miracle, as you stand in faith for God to restore everything that has been taken, those of us here at TBN are standing with you. We love you. We believe in you. God is a miracle-working God, and your miracle is on the way. God bless you, and bye-bye. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.